Beryl closing in on Texas on today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for July 7th. Well, Beryl is the only game in town around the world and it's still keeping us well on our toes right now as it um, continues on towards the coast of Texas. Still no signs of strengthening yet, but it could become a rapidly intensifying storm in the immediate lead up towards its landfall near Matagorda Island. Day 37 of Atlantic hurricane season and the other area of interest that we were following, Invest 96L, we have finally scrubbed it from the uh, chart this morning. And so it is just Beryl that we have and uh, what a storm it has been so far on its uh, final stretch before it makes its final landfall. Day 51 in the Eastern Pacific hurricane season and again we have no areas of interest active now that Aletta has fled the scene. Uh, we didn't manage to make any bulletins whilst it was active because we were too busy with Beryl. Uh, but no areas of interest right now. In the Western Pacific, we've also got no areas here, but like in, in the Eastern Pacific, the longer range models are showing the potential uh, for a new development. But at the moment, we're not confident enough that we're gonna see anything yet, and so it's still a blank canvas. And in the North Indian Ocean, we've got lots of showers around the coast of India, but nothing in terms of tropical cyclone development. It's looking relatively quiet here, um, and we're not expecting anything uh, either. And for what it's worth, a little peep down into the Southern Hemisphere, the Southwest Indian Ocean. Again, no areas of interest here. Um, and we reset the clock on those uh, um, numbers as we have entered the new 2024-25 season. Basically, New Year for the Southern Hemisphere a few days ago at the start of July. Well, let's take a look at Beryl then. We have hurricane warnings obviously in effect from Baffin Bay to San Luis Pass. So warnings were extended earlier. It is 210 kilometers from South Padre Island, 241 from Brownsville, 325 from Corpus Christi, 396 from Victoria, and 404 from Galveston. That's around 252 miles for Galveston there. And for South Padre Island, we're looking at about 100 and I think 150 miles or so, maybe a little bit less. Storm surge warning there as well for the north end of the Padre Island National Seashore to High Island, Texas. Let's check the storm on satellite imagery then as we look at it in these early hours or morning hours now. Uh, the sun is just starting to rise over the storm as this bulletin is being produced and here it is on the infrared blend imagery and you can see it is throwing up some decent amounts of convection and looking at the eye on radar it is starting to look well, if it is an eye, a little bit better, uh, but big banding on the western side there as well. But still at this point, the storm is partially exposed. Here is a look at the radar view uh, from COD right now. And it, interesting to see the movement there. It does look like it might be a little bit further towards the west, but it's hard to tell on that imagery. It could be a little bit of a trick, uh, but it is looking a little bit better on that radar imagery. Recon are going into the storm as we speak. Uh, as of the update, they saw 45 knot winds at the flight levels, uh, but they may have gotten higher than that since. That was in the eastern side, which looks like it's relatively quiet. And we're not sure what the center pass will be yet but at the moment it looks like we've not seen much strengthening and 60 miles per hour is probably a good bet that may become the case that gets to 65 miles per hour shortly and then that may begin that new strengthening trend but it is a significant chance that we could get some rapid strengthening as it reaches the coast in the next 24 hours the ship's model um, which uh, forecasts the potential for rapid intensification is suggesting a 35 percent chance that beryl will reach land at uh, 90 miles per hour which is of course high-end category one that radar imagery as well looking decent on that western flag uh, with some significant rain showers was on the way to the Texas coast. Wide shot here of the east coast of the United States looking out over the Atlantic and now here it is with a barrel there on the left hand side of course shimmying on towards the coast of Texas it will still take a little while before it gets there landfall expected early Monday morning. Is the Caribbean region and this satellite imagery is a little bit uh, messed up right now those latest frames obviously speeding up as we've gotten less uh, frames um, 
And this is the coast of Africa. A couple of little uh, blow ups there, just about to move off the coast. And in the eastern Pacific, a little thunderstorm moving off El Salvador right now out into the eastern Pacific, but generally a quiet basin. West Pacific, lots of storms again over the Philippines right now. It looks like it's a wet season there for sure. And in the Indochina region and towards India and Bangladesh, lots of uh, showers, heavy showers all across that region. Myanmar a little bit in the Karma area there. And off, in, off into the Arabian Sea, storms blowing up off the west coast of India out over the water right now. Not too much else going on. Well, sea surface temperatures are still looking decent in the eastern Pacific in a few spots, although not as much as we might normally see in a season. Uh, it is around 30 to 31 degrees in those hottest spots there south of uh, Mexico. Of course, in the Gulf of Mexico, those temperatures are really getting up there in parts of the northern Gulf off Louisiana, 32 degrees plus there, extending to Florida as well, the Florida Keys, and for the northern Bahamas. Um, and the rest of the Atlantic looking good too. West Pacific, a large area there of very warm waters now extending from Hainan Island and the Gulf of Tonkin through the Philippines and the Taiwan and through most of the Ryukyu Islands now in Japan. Temperatures looking still decent despite all of the rainfall in the Indian Ocean, uh, maximums there of 29 to 30 degrees. Compared to average, this is what it looks like. The Atlantic very much above average in a lot of areas still. Two to three degrees, generally the order of the day and even higher in the uh, extratropical regions. The Pacific, East Pack looking okay, near average overall. And the Western Pacific quite a bit above, especially further north. Some real hot spots appearing now near the Philippines, Taiwan, Hong Kong. Join a triangle there and east of the northern Ryukyu Islands. Oceanic heat content is also very high in the Western Pacific, really just waiting for some substantial storms to appear there in the Philippine Sea. East Pacific, not so much. Those uh, numbers only getting towards 50 to 75 uh, kilojoules per centimeter squared, I think that is. Uh, substantial oceanic heat content there. And in the Atlantic, we're seeing high amounts of uh, oceanic heat content there as well and energy in those uh, waters extending down a fair way still a lot of it in the caribbean but a secondary little spot there near where beryl is right now in near texas gfs computer model for the next five days shows the storm moving inland but it's not particularly strong compared to what we were looking at in earlier model runs however it still looks like we're going to see a mid-range category one by the time it lands and it looks like at the moment that the landfall could be near matagorda bay although the forecast models um, have always been shifting east and we still can't rule out tropical storm force winds for the houston metropolitan area or even for dallas if it continues inland at pace uh, so we could still see some substantial impacts from the storm in populated areas. As for rainfall, you can see that the expectations may have gone down just a slight bit, uh, probably owing to the storm's quicker movement. We are still looking at up to 6 to 8 inches in a few parts uh, along the spine of the storm as it moves inland between Houston and Dallas and then straight up uh, towards the Great Lakes area, just east of Chicago later on in that period. But around the Houston and Galveston area, we are looking at three to four inches by the looks of things, according to these latest rainfall estimates. Well, let's take a look at the longer range then, day five through 10. And we're looking at the Western Pacific now for a further development there in the South China Sea, a very large tropical cyclone forming out of nothing almost there and becoming a typhoon before affecting the coast of Vietnam. And just about moving along the coast without making a decided landfall uh, before continuing northwestwards, weakening substantially later on uh, as it takes its toll with that land interaction. But interesting feature there, uh, a large July system that could be affecting the coast of Vietnam. Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 merch store where you can take a look at all of our items as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request. And of course still available right now are still waiting for Hone t-shirt uh, because we're still waiting for that storm in the Central Pacific. 
in the Silly Range, day 10 to 16, the Eastern Pacific wakes up in a big way. We have uh, two little systems vying to become a tropical cyclone west at first, then a second storm that forms and becomes a very powerful hurricane. There it is, getting to Category 4 status, moving west-northwest, and a third storm forming behind that to its east off the coast of Mexico. So, as we say, with how quiet things have been in the Eastern Pacific, one of the slowest starts on record, Perhaps it is fighting back in a big way there in that long range, but it is still long range. Well, back to July 7th, 1986, when we had an extremely powerful Category 5 typhoon about to reach the Philippine Islands, one of the strongest of the decade. A Category 5 about to make landfall in the northern Philippines on Luzon, uh, of course, sweeping through westwards and into the South China Sea later on. Very powerful storm, and you can clearly see that eye there on the image. We also had Tropical Depression Derby, which was about to die off in the eastern Pacific. Uh, um, and so, apart from that, a generally quiet picture across the rest of the world, but Peggy, I think, would have been keeping us busy. Well, back to today, we are still code orange for Beryl right now. The next name in the Atlantic is Debbie. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Bud. And in the Central Pacific, the next name is still Hone, as it has been since October 2019. 24 storms around the world now in 2024. And in the Western Pacific, the next name is Agami, and in the North Indian Ocean, it will be Asna. And we expect that we'll probably have more live coverage later in the evening for Beryl, an evening stream tonight on the Force 13 channel. We'll have updates on social media as well. In the Australian region, the next name is Robin, Southwest Indian Ocean, Ansha, and in the South Pacific, it is Pitta. Our next Tropical Weather Bulletin, we're not sure when it will be due to live coverage, but we'll see you again on the Force 13 channel fairly soon. Become an ultimate fan today.